Hello, everyone. I'm Gustavo Tolosa, and welcome to this YouTube Live on Saturday, February 26th of 2022. So I am doing um, a, a live webinar or a live transmission on YouTube or Facebook every day uh, to celebrate the Chef AJ uh, Chef AJ's Bundle, which is an amazing compilation of videos and PDFs and programs of over 111 of the best the world has to offer with all the experts that you know and love, providing you with the expertise and with exercise programs and with lectures and with cooking demos and recipes. My own program, The Pianist and the Chef, is included. I just want to um, encourage you to at least, to just to at least take a look at this bundle, which I'm going to put here, um, just for your own, um, just for fun, so that you can see really what can be done. I have never seen a bundle like this where you uh, buy one thing or actually half of a thing and you get 111. It's going to be gone next Tuesday, March 2nd. So I really encourage you to at least look at it. Just the titles will give you ideas of some things that you might want to try on your own. So there is the link. Please look at it. All right. So today I'm going to answer some very important questions that you had for me. And also, as the title says, I'm going to show you ooh, these ravioli. This is not a cooking demo today. So unfortunately, I cannot, I don't have a recipe. I can, I will have a recipe. Um, at some point, and I will do a webinar, but um, today I'm going to answer questions, and I'm going to tell you how you could possibly make this, um, because I think that I know uh, what the recipe is. What happens is that I went to a health food store, and I found this box, and it, said, it, and it says uh, ravioli with pumpkin and quinoa. And I started looking at it and I knew that it was going to have um, some kind of cheese, even if it was uh, vegan cheese and it was going to have oil and I was ready to put it down. But when I look at the ingredients and it says organic whole wheat flour, okay, whole wheat flour is allowed in the McDougal program. And it's actually um, pasta is one of the... Um, uh, foods that is allowed in a uh, diabetics um, way in uh, you know diet, as you will see here in reversing diabetes. Um, and it says um, besides that, it has um, kabocha squash, which is that squash that has a thick um, cover, you know, and it's and it's um, it's green on the outside, and it has water and it has quinoa. Okay, and then he has nutmeg and pepper and lemon. So I couldn't believe it, and I bought it, I cooked it, I made my own spaghetti sauce, and um, it's very simple but very yummy. I can tell you how to make that. This is um, so, and then I sprinkled a little bit of. Um, nutritional yeast okay this is basil the green leaves that you see and i haven't tried it so i'm going to try it right here in front of you for the first time wow no oh. <laughs> i don't know if i'll be able to keep going with this webinar with this live oh my goodness hmm You can taste the sweetness of the pumpkin. Mm. The quinoa gives it texture, but quinoa doesn't really have that strong of a flavor. And you can definitely taste the nutmeg. Mm. And of course, I have to say that when you make pasta like this, 
the secret is in the sauce. The sauce can enhance everything or it can make it kind of bland. So how do I make this easy sauce? Well, I just buy tomato sauce and I, and I buy a can of um, fire roasted tomatoes in, in little chunks or just, it doesn't have to be fire roasted. Both of those things need to be oil free. And I mix them, those two things in a, in a little pan and, uh, and I put it in medium high heat and um, I add a teaspoon of oregano and half a teaspoon of, um, let's see, it has oregano and it has uh, thyme, half a teaspoon of thyme. And it has also half a teaspoon of, um, or actually it was a teaspoon of onion powder. If you use salt, you can add a little bit of salt, like an eighth of a teaspoon. And if you like um, pepper, you can add pepper to that as well. And that is the sauce. And you just cook it for like 10 minutes. And uh, I know it sounds simple, but it's very delicious. So um, that's the sauce. How would I make this? So if you want to be able to see me making this recipe together with a party potato roll, make sure you're in my email list. If you receive my emails, then you are in my email list. If you never receive an email from me, then chances are that you're not, or maybe you are, but you have unsubscribed or you're blocked for some reason. But um, if you don't receive emails from me, then send me an email and I will add you to my email list. And my email is info at antimas.com. And that is um, P-L-A-N-T-E-M-U-S.com. Info at plantimus.com. And the website that I have with Dr. Ponyman is actually plantemus.com. So you can visit that as well. There's a lot of free resources there. Very good. So how would I make this? I will, if you if you are in my email list, I will announce it when I will make this recipe. I buy kabocha squash. I cook it whole in the instant pot or on any pond, pot until it's it's very soft and it's falling apart. You um, take the skin off in this case. Uh, if you make the kabocha soup, which is delicious, it's a creamy soup, you don't have to do that. But if you, I would take the skin off, take, of course, the seeds off as well and all those stringy things. And uh, you end up with just the inside of the squash. So you mash it and then um, you will add probably an eighth of a teaspoon of nutmeg and maybe if you can eat uh, pepper add pepper to your taste and if you want to you can add a little bit of um, nutritional yeast but you don't have to and i would add uh, a teaspoon of onion powder and that's it and then you're cooking you have to cook the quinoa in a little pan as well cook one cup of quinoa and two cups of water. One cup of quinoa, two cups of water. It's going to give you three cups of cooked quinoa. Make sure that you wash the quinoa three or four times before you cook it, or it might be really bitter. Okay, so you once it starts boiling, you lower it to medium or medium low. You cover it and you let it cook. Um, Every now and then you can stir it. You have to cook it. I can't tell you exactly how long. You have to cook it until all the liquid is evaporated and you can see that the quinoa is fluffy. Okay, and then it's done. Then you would combine not all three cups of quinoa. You can keep the, some of the quinoa for later. You can put it on salads. You can add other veggies. You can eat it as a cereal, etc. I would I would add one cup of quinoa to the pumpkin mix. I would mix it, and that's what's inside this. I don't know if you can uh, see. Let's 
mm, maybe maybe it's hard to see uh, but uh, yeah it's hard to see but um, I don't think you're gonna see it in on the screen here but uh, I can see it clearly you can see the orange that's the pumpkin okay now for the dough you will need real whole wheat flour that I assume is, go is going to have that and water. And um, we'll see. I'm going to come up with a recipe. Okay, so I just wanted to basically tell you that this is possible to eat delicious foods. This is a treat. I don't eat this every week. Actually, I eat this every three or four months. I don't eat it at all every day or every week. Okay, so let's go on with the questions here. I had, um, let's see. Okay, one of the questions that you all sent me was, will white rice make me gain weight as opposed to brown rice? The answer is no, it's not going to. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the work of Dr. Kempner, a very prestigious doctor. He's not alive anymore. Dr. Kempner. Make sure you find him on Google. You read about it um, because he did a lot of research with rice. And actually in this, um, in this study where people were put on a rice diet, um, and it was white rice, um, they actually had to start adding um, sugar and other things because people were losing too much weight. And let me say, let me remind you, like Dr. McDougall does all the time, a few decades ago when in Japan and China, there weren't any McDonald's or Burger Kings. There was no sad diet, no standard American diet. And the staple food was rice uh, with a lot of veggies and some meat as a very, as a very um, small amount of condiment. Um, those populations, not only were they mostly thin and, uh, yeah, thin, but um, illnesses like diabetes and um, uh, heart disease and inflammatory diseases and cancer were virtually, virtually unknown. So it's not a matter of genetics because when those same people move to the United States or to a place where uh, animal products are the basics of the diet, those people start to gain weight and they start to have the same illnesses that we have in the populations where the uh, standard American diet is established. So, um, of course, it is, if, if you can and, there, um, and it doesn't bother you, it's slightly better to have rice brown. Why? Because it has more fiber and we are always looking to consume as much fiber as possible because fiber takes toxins out of our body. Fiber and water creates bulk and it makes us feel satisfied and full. Um, but white rice has also fiber. So um, the, the short answer is no, white rice is not going to make you gain weight. Now, if you eat uh, white rice with uh, Parmesan cheese on it and you put butter and then you eat it with a side of steak, yes, you will gain weight, but it's for the fat that you're eating and not from the rice. Another question, it gets very confusing. Some people push more leafy greens, lots of salads. Others push the starches like potatoes, brown rice, etc. I feel like I can't fit it all into my day and wonder if I'm missing something. Well, 
The answer is yes, we're missing something. And uh, that is go back to the basics, go back to the source of the real, real experts. In this case, I would cite Dr. McDougall, Dr. Esselstyn, um, um, many other doctors, Dr. Clapper. I mean, there are many doctors that um, will tell you that it's in our human nature to make things more complicated. We want to make things difficult. If something seems simple, we think there's something wrong and we need to find ways to make it more complicated. So Dr. McDougall says this all the time, uh, a starch-based diet is so simple that it seems stupid, it seems silly, but um, that's what it is. It doesn't mean that it's easy. It, that simple and easy don't equate. Sometimes there's something simple, but it's not easy to do. In this case, I think that the starch solution and the starch-based diet, a whole food plant-based diet based on starches is simple and it's also quite easy to do. So what I would say to, to you, whoever sent me this question, is um, listen to the experts. Many of the people that push lots of salads and leafy greens are uh, my friends and I respect them a lot. And actually, I do that too. But what I'm trying to say now is that start with what the experts say. Start, I think, with the starch solution because you won't feel deprived. You can have all the starches, potatoes, sweet potatoes, rice. You could even have whole wheat bread and pasta and um, fruits and desserts that, that are healthy. And as you get more comfortable with that and you push all of the animal products aside and you start to see the results, then you can refine things. Then you can start adding more green vegetables. Uh, I'm saying add more because I think you should eat them also, uh, even if you're in doing the starch solution. And um, you can refine it and you can start eating more salads and this and that, but there isn't a, question, a way, one way that fits all. We all have to find and refine what, what works for us. So it does get very confusing, even among doctors themselves. Um, but I say, find the doctor that makes the most sense to you. To me, it's Dr. McDougall. To you, it may be somebody else. And follow that person or the recommendations of that physician uh, strictly for a while. Don't, don't start day one already considering a hundred different things. Go with that and see how that works for you. If it doesn't, then you can move to another. And if it does, then you can start fine-tuning it. So um, I say start with the basics. Make your plate 70 to 80% starches, which is unrefined, unrefined carbohydrates, not uh, processed or ultra-processed. And um, add to that all the other vegetables, green, red, orange, yellow, whatever, all the others. And um, to give it color, to give it taste, to give it texture and to make it interesting. Another question is, is it okay to eat waffles made out of banana and rolled oats? Is there any difference between eating a half a cup of oats from the waffle iron as opposed to half a cup of boiled rolled oats? I get tired of eating steel cut oats and when I saw this recipe for oat waffles, I tried it and really liked it. In your opinion, with, will this slow down my weight loss? I'm concerned that eating waffles this way is not good. It's not that it's not good. And excuse me, I'm going to have another bite. There's nothing unhealthy in bananas and oats. The question is, do you have a lot to lose? Do you have some weight to lose? 
Are you maintaining? What, where are you? If you have lost all the weight that you want and um, every now and then you have waffles, it's not, it's okay. Um, now, what is the difference? Well, the difference is quite big. When you eat oats made with water and uh, as, an, as a cup of warm oatmeal, the oats have water in them, which is essential for you to feel satisfied. Water and fiber. Water and fiber is what we need all the time or 90% of the time. We want to have water and fiber in everything we eat. If we have fiber but not water, the caloric content goes up and we don't feel as full. If we have water but there's no fiber, the same thing. Um, we will, there, there's, we're going to feel hungry. So water and fiber is the magic combination. So yes, it is better that you eat oatmeal that you made, like I make it every day, half a cup of, of oats, um, rolled oats, and then a cup and a half to two, depending, of water. I put cinnamon, I put chia seeds, and then when and I cook it for like one minute because I don't want to overcook it. And this is not the the instant oatmeal. This is rolled oats or, or or you know the the thickest kind, the thicker kind. And then I put bananas and all sorts of berries or or peaches or things like that. Um, you can also make savory oatmeal with um, uh, with mushrooms or with other veggies and spices, which I'm going to include in a video as well. Uh, but it is better that way because the waffles, what is it that they don't have? Well, they don't have as much water. So you're going to be eating more. The waffles are already higher in calorie than the oatmeal with water. And you will want to eat more because there is not enough water. So it takes longer to get full. That's not to say that it's unhealthy. It's just that it's better to eat the oats. If you're trying, tired to eat oatmeal, try my favorite breakfast, the one that I use to lose the most weight, and that is hash browns with no oil. Either you have to grate your own app, your own um, uh, potatoes, or you have to buy them already frozen, already grated, but with no oil and you use a nonstick pan, a really good one, you add some chopped onions and red peppers and green peppers, and you cook it on the pan, and that is my favorite, with a side of steamed broccoli or, a, or something else. Or sometimes it's just that, and I eat as much as I want of that, with a cup of a nice cup of, of herbal tea or, or sparkling water, whatever you want to drink with it. Okay, let's see if I have any comments or questions that I need to answer while I'm talking. Please feel free. Please feel free to write questions here and or comments. I'm reading them, so um, I will uh, make sure that I answer. Okay, what do you put on mashed potatoes? Maybe the, the question is, what do you not put on mashed potatoes? Because on mashed potatoes, I put... Oh my God, I put so many things. I don't know where to start. I mean, I put corn, I put, sometimes I put beans. Um, I put, um, uh, I mean, I just, I, I, I eat them so much that I can't, um, I eat them on the, on the side. I eat them with um, uh, steamed vegetables, a variety of steamed vegetables or steamed broccoli, or I buy the spring mixed veggies and I mix it all together. Um, there is a, a really good uh, brown gravy that you can put on it um, that is in Dr. McDougall's website. You can put, um, let's see, what else do I put on mashed potatoes? I also mix them with squash. Um, but usually I just like the potatoes so much that um, I eat them like that. 
But feel free to experiment, add things to make it interesting if, uh, if that's what you're looking for. Okay, so here comes one of the questions that, um, that you all have, and I'm going to uh, put a link to a video that Dr. McDougall um, made just a, few, um, just a few weeks ago. So this video is new. And the question is, why does my blood sugar go up after I eat potatoes? So I'm going to give you the link. There is the link for you to watch Dr. McDougall. And he explains it very well. So what does he say? And um, mm, this is very good. Dr. McDougall says, the purpose of eating is to raise your blood sugar. If it, if it didn't raise, there would be something wrong with you. <laughs> glucose powers your cells, your brain. Actually, glucose, which is sugar, it's the preferred fuel of the brain, and not fat or protein. It's glucose, it's sugar. Some cells in the body, Dr. McDougall says, only work on sugar, like the cells in the kidneys or the red blood cells, they have to have glucose. So Dr. McDougall says, a regular person who eats rice, potatoes, corn, will also see a rise in sugar. And that's what's normal. That's what's expected. It's, it's just fine. It's supposed to go up. It's supposed to go up from 70 to 80, which is what you, your blood sugar level would be before eating, to about 110, 20, even 140 after eating starches. If, now, Dr. McDougall says, if it goes up to 200, 300, 400, then you probably need medical attention and um, so consult a doctor, a physician. Um, Dr. McDougall says, and I have seen it with my own eyes when I've attended the program in person. Dr. McDougall says that the cure rate at the McDougall program is 100% for diabetes, for diabetes. Type 2, type 2, which is diabetes most common and is the one that is related to diet and to overweight. So it's a hundred percent percentage of cure rate. By definition, type two diabetes is due to diet, Dr. McDougall says. And he says, when you compare eating a meat-based diet with a starch-based diet, yes, of course, your blood sugar is going to go higher because meat doesn't have any sugar, but it has fat, which causes insulin resistance which causes diabetes. So it will be higher for a few hours, two hours, three hours, uh, your blood sugar after you eat uh, starches. And then after a few hours, it will start to go down. After a few days, your blood sugar will be quite constant and not have all those high peaks of rising and falling. Um, Dr. McDougall says that um, he will reduce and eliminate medication. He never, ever prescribes pills. He, if he has to, he will prescribe insulin. He says that pills are too toxic. So type 1 diabetes has to be on insulin once a day, probably. That's what Dr. McDougall says. If you're one and a half, like he says, there is the diabetes, the, 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 there are diabetics who are not type one and they're not type two yet. They're somewhere in between one and a half. The one and a half type diabetes is when you have excessive thirst, excessive urination and excessive weight. Dr. McDougall treats them with a long lasting type of insulin once a day. Now, type 2 diabetes 
is um, uh, is insulin resistance because of excessive weight. The insulin cannot work properly because when it goes to each cell of the body where it has to go and open the cell so that glucose can go in, it goes there, the body makes insulin, the insulin travels to the cell, everything is working fine, but then when it gets there, it cannot work properly because the cell inside is full of fat. And until that fat comes out, by stopping eating a fat-based diet as opposed to a plant-based whole food diet, the fat is going to remain there and you will be insulin resistant and then diabetic. Uh, Dr. McDougall says that sometimes for psychological reasons, because your relatives may be worried about you or because you may be worried for a while, for psychological reasons, Dr. McDougall puts a patient on a little bit of insulin, but that is psychological reason. Uh, it won't, it, it, he could totally take it out. Actually, Dr. McDougall, in this video that I put there for you to watch, he says that on the first day, and I have seen it myself, on the first day of the McDougall program, he takes patients with diabetes type 2 off all medication. And um, after, yes, for the first day and two and three days when their bodies are getting accustomed to having healthy starches as opposed to all the animal products, um, the blood sugar will go up. But he says, it's okay. You will, it will, your body will get used to this way of eating in a few days and it should uh, be normal. Um, Dr. McDougall says that he stops medication on the first day, body uh, loses its insulin resistance. The first two or three days, the sugar may be high, but then it goes down. Um, it's just, you have to give your body, your cells time to get that fat that is accumulated inside your cells out of the cells. And that will take, it may take a few days, it may take a week. Uh, but of course, make sure that you're always in uh, the care of a physician when you do this. Because when you switch to a whole food plant-based diet, low fat, no oil, you uh, will need um, constant communication to adjust your medication. Or your blood sugar may drop way too low. It will be dangerously low. So uh, Dr. Barnard, in his book, Reversing Diabetes, in this YouTube channel that you're in now, if you click on um, playlist, you will see that there is a playlist called Online Book Club. There I put all the book clubs that we've done so far during the last two years. You will see this one there. I, if diabetes is a topic that interests you, I recommend that you watch each of those episodes. Um, it's, um, he explains the problem and the solution in a brilliant way. Um, and uh, on page 60, he talks about uh, what we're talking about here, that it is normal for blood sugar to go up after eating especially if you're eating starches, that that's not something that is, is should be a concern when you're switching to a whole food plant-based diet. He mentions that. He mentions what to do. And uh, if you don't have this book, I recommend that you get it and that you um, read it. Perhaps read it along with the book club um, and see how, because... Sometimes we do demonstrations, we have guests, we explain things uh, in the book club. I hope that this has helped you. Uh, hi, Gustavo. Thank you for inviting us for lunch today. Looks like you are planning a delicious treat. Yes, I am. Um, I'm planning. You know, I love to cook and I love to cook and make music. So in my next show of The Pianist and the Chef, I will play some of my favorite music. And I will also show you in detail how to make the party potato roll. I will show you how to 
Mm. Make these uh, pumpkin quinoa whole wheat ravioli. I will show you how to make um, a different kind of oatmeal if you're tired of eating sweet oatmeal. And I might add another really good potato recipe. So make sure you're on my uh, email list. Send me an email. And um, um, very good. One of you says that that was a very good book club. Yes, it was. Um, it's just that we need we need to take control of our own health. We need to be informed. Some of the information uh, available out there is information that anybody uh, that uh, can read and has uh, uh, intelligence uh, will understand. You don't need to be an astrophysicist or an, or a, you know or a, um, a physician to understand some of these concepts. I'm not saying that you can prescribe medicine or take a patient off medications or or go and do brain surgery or things like that. But some of these concepts are um, easy to uh, to understand. And you can understand them by um, reading the book, attending the book club, watching the video that Dr. McDougall uh, made a few, uh, just probably two weeks ago. And um, remember to check out that um, amazing, amazing bundle. And um, I will see you in my next live broadcast. In the next month of March, the book club is going to be amazing. So uh, I will announce it soon. It's with a major, we're going to be reading the work of a very, very prestigious uh, physician, and uh, I will invite him to have a webinar with me. So make sure you're in my email list. Autoimmune arthritis, I do great on starch. Yes, starch is a miracle. It will help you in just about every area of your life, uh, of your health. Thank you very much. Have a good weekend, everybody, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.